Hi, so it's Vera Kresniansky from Adayat, and we're continuing with our dating series. And I'm really excited to bring Yael Swash to talk about money. Money is a big part of marriage, one of the biggest part of stressors in a marriage. And it's important to talk about it during the marriage, but it's also important to talk about it during dating. So I'm really excited, Yael, that we're going to be talking about this topic, how to talk about money during dating. Thank you, Devora. What a pleasure. So it's such an important topic, Kola Kavod, for in introducing it and making it available to your audience. It's really important. So yeah, you do a lot about you. This is what you do is help people with their money matters and money stories and how to make more money, but also how to talk about money in a relationship. So talk right. a little bit about really what more about what you do. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. So I'm a money coach. I'm the host of the Jewish Money Matters podcast. I help Jewish women and couples really transform their relationship with money and with themselves, right? And really build the joyful, richer life that they want and really um, man learn to manage not just their money mindset, but also their money per se. So a lot of money management tools and a lot of money mindset tools. I have a, a, group, a group coaching program for women called God Wants You to Be Rich, super transformative. And as you said, in my work, I encounter obviously just what you define, right? I encounter money becoming this thing that gets in between couples seemingly, right? It impairs the relationship on some level. Um, even from a very early stage of the marriage to many, many years down the road. So I've seen people struggle with this situation um, at every stage of the marriage. And as you alluded to, I do feel that th it is important to when one is already dating seriously for marriage to start having conversations about money. Um, not that not that everything that you're going to find out is meant to be a disqualifier, but establish, first of all, it's something that, like you said, you're going to do continuously throughout your married life. And if you don't, you're going to run into trouble. So, and that's really when there's not healthy communication on our money and open, transparent communication, a lot of trouble happens. So we want to try to establish before we even, you know, embark in this commitment for life, whether we have the same perspectives in this area or whether we think that we can manage this together with this person. So, you know, it doesn't, it sounds scary. I may we'll give some examples. It sounds scary right now when I'm saying it, but really just note that you're doing something really, really important. And so you want to make sure that this is a person that you feel their values around money align with yours. And even if things are different, and I want to stress that it's not that they have to manage their money in the same way as you. It's not that they have to think about money in the same exact way as you. This would be almost impossible, right? But it's even if it's different, do I, can I see that I can respect that perspective? And then I'm curious about that, that perspective, right? That there's some sort of compatibility, or is this a real red flag, right? Is this something that's jumping at me that's saying, wait, that is so not the way I was brought up doing things or in the way I think things are right. And maybe I need to e investigate more, right? So we want to have some sort of conversation that leads us that down those path of understanding, yes, I could see that this is we could talk about this comfortably and that we we will deal with this comfortably through our marriage. Or I can see that something's off here, off here right? And I need to investigate a little bit more. Right. So just to reiterate, we're, it's not the amount of money. It's not about, yeah. we're not really even talking about if he or she is capable of bringing a partner. So we're talking about how to use the money, whether yeah. it's spending, saving, investing, giving tzedakah, or we're so... Let's talk a little Thank bit you. more about where we get these ideas from. Thank you. This is an important point. It isn't about finding out how much money a person has. It's it's not that. Yes, of course, we want to find out whether we want to be open and transparent and say, this is how much debt I have. This is how much I've saved. I, and the I other wanna, person- I want to stress that. How much? I think it's important to talk about how much debt you are coming into a marriage with. Absolutely. 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 And I want to say again, even if it 
even if it's different from you, okay, even if you have the conversation and you realize, oh, well, I'm coming into this relationship with no debt and he or she is coming with debt, that doesn't mean it's a deal breaker. That doesn't mean that this is a sign that you need to break it off, God forbid. It means that now there's another layer to investigate and to talk about, right? Why the debt? Where is it coming from? What for? Is it something, you know? Because it could be just student loans that you're willing to deal with together as a couple, right? There, there's just so many things. So I don't want to scare people off and say, well, if you find out that if this person has less, less than certain amount in assets, then there's really a problem or has this much debt, it's really a problem. No, sometimes debt can be a problem and sometimes it can't be a problem. The problem really is when we go at it blindly, right? But we have to go at it with education. We're making the most important decision of our lives, right? And and we have to come approach this as I'm willing to work things out with this person for the rest of my life. And I will, I will work out children issue and issues and health issues and financial issues, right? That's we're embarking in this relationship. We're going to build a whole life together that involves all these pieces of this beautiful equation that's building a home, right? Am I ready to do that with this person? So before I even, before I even say yes, I have to know what kind of things are there? What am I, what, what am I dealing with? Right? So that's about disclosing and sharing. And let's talk about what this conversation could be about. So we spoke last time when we did, we did actually, we did, a, we did a couple of workshops together where we talked about more about selling bias and mm -hmm. uh, marriage, which is why I'm bringing you as now pre selling bias. So we'll talk about it. So we talked a little bit about knowing each other's money personalities. Can you expound on that? Yeah, sure. So the money personality really is also called as known as the money story. And it's really something that's shaped from very early on in your life. And it's the accumulation of all the things that you've heard, experienced, learned about money from very early in your childhood until until today, right? So it, it really has shaped your belief system, right? So if you saw your parents argue a lot, or if you saw your parents give very generously, or if you saw your parents, they got along with money very nicely and they spoke about it. If you had a successful lemonade stand when you were eight and you then at 11, you know, had another cool business and, and you know, and by 15, right? All those things, all those experiences make up your money story, right? And so I'm not suggesting that when we're dating, we're going to discover a person's money story. I'm suggesting that, yes, we should be aware of what ours is personally, um, at least somewhat, um, and be curious about what that person's is, is like. Um, but what I am suggesting is that we could be upfront, I'm not saying in the first date, or maybe not the second date, right? This is not the way to do this. But when you are already serious with a person, you can be totally upfront and literally say, well, okay, so let's talk about how much money, what are we bringing? What are we bringing here? How much debt do you have? What's your salary? What's my salary? What's my, what's my savings, right? You want to get your cards out on the table. You don't want to just get married and then find out, oh, we can't cover the rent or Oh, I didn't realize you have forty thousand dollars in credit card debt. How are we going to pay for that plus the rent? Or oh, I didn't realize your parents were planning on supporting us. Well, I didn't. I, I don't agree with that. Right? That's that's not the way to do it. So th that's what I'm saying. At some point, we have to say this. This, this it might feel uncomfortable, but we have to tell ourselves it's not, it doesn't need to be uncomfortable. And even if it's uncomfortable, it's going to be a discomfort that I'm, it's going to become less and less comfortable as we progress in our marriage. And the sooner we start learning to have these conversations, the less discomfort we're going to feel and the better we're going to be off. So we want to start having them now, even if it feels like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm talking about money. I've never talked about money with anyone in my life, right? Maybe so openly, we still want to make sure that we try to have the conversation and you'd be surprised. Maybe the other person actually ends up appreciating that you're so open about it. Like I remember for myself when I was younger and I met my husband and we were getting very serious. I don't know how it didn't even dawn on me that we should actually have this conversation. And I so appreciate today that he was the one who brought it up and it was so like, Oh my gosh, he's right. Like, Thank God that he asked. It's true that he should ask, right? He told me how much he 
has, how much he makes, how much, and I and I to, I share the same thing, and it was just so wonderful because it's already starting from a place of transparency, and you want to create that transparency right now because if somebody's not willing to say these things, then do we really like there's there's something off there, right? Like if if you can't be open about how much you're making, how much you save, how much debt you carry. Do you give miser? Do you give tzedakah? How do you do that? Right. If you can't be open about your numbers with somebody that you're about to tie your entire life with, then, then something is off, right? Because you need to feel like you're in a relationship where you can trust this person with something that is pretty vulnerable, right? You don't go just closing it everywhere, but with this person, you want to make sure that you are comfortable and that if they are not comfortable sharing that information, that's a pretty big red flag, right? And again, it's not about judging. When they share the information, it's not to say that if it's information that is different from yours or the way maybe it was done by your parents, that you automatically discard that person, right? Th th then there's more to talk about. But what I want to make sure that people understand is that appreciating the transparency. And if somebody's not willing to be transparent when you're already seriously talking about building a life together, then that might be a real red flag. Right. So the discomfort, at some point, the first conversation about money may be uncomfortable or may not, but if it's uncomfortable for you to talk about money, at some point in your marriage, you're going to have that first conversation. Exactly. Exactly. And part of dating is to see if you can be vulnerable and if you can have difficult conversations. And if someone is really holding back on that information, that's something, like you said, something to think about. It's not only yeah. the topic of money, but I'm saying it's not only, it's can you have these kind of difficult conversations? Right. Vulnerable conversations, whatever it is. And there's other topics you know, that we talked about in other podcasts about the, the if someone has this trauma in their background, there's the same kind of, hard conversation can you have that hard conversation and here we're yeah. talking about money of course yeah. information is also important but there's two parts to it yeah and, I, and i'll tell you two things one thing going back to what you mentioned before about the money personalities of the money story it would be amazing if you could be vulnerable in that sense and get to a point where already early on before you know when you're deciding whether this is the right person for, for you you can talk about these things like you could actually openly talk about the fact that you know what, I had to take a massive amount of student loan, right? Or my parents really, or whatever, you know, whatever the stories are, right? Because that's that's who you are. You're going to keep carrying that story for the rest of your marriage, right? And again, it's a really vulnerable part of you, but it's a part of you that the person who you're supposed to spend the rest of your life with is going to love and appreciate, right? So, we have to understand that that's part of getting to know someone. So, so much of the dating process is about becoming vulnerable. And we're saying, don't forget ab about this area. Now, having said that, we could make it a little bit fun. Like we don't have to make it this like, you know, the talk, right? You can, you know, you can, I've heard cute stories like, you know, you go out on a date and you bring post-it notes and a Sharpie and each of you, you know, write the not you know one number and you put it there and then you know lift it up and then you look at both numbers and then maybe you share a funny story about that you know how did you get that job or how do you you know how did you whatever you know what i mean like you you don't you know use your creativity and use your personalities but the point is don't shy away from the conversation because like you very well said devora the conversation is going to happen <laughs> and unfortunately in many cases it happens way too late. And what tends to happen in a lot of marriages, instead of having these conversations, there's a lot of spats, a lot of arguments that happen. They're not really conversations. They're more like uh, adversarial encounters, right? And so we don't want to go there. We want to make sure that we can actually have an open, comfortable conversation, again, within the level of discomfort, but meaning like, like, oh, I could trust this person. And I'm not saying, you know, say everything on one date. It's little by little as you are getting to that stage where you're pretty sure that you're about to get engaged. You want to make sure that these things are things that you know about each other. So with dating also, it's about making sure the other person accepts you. Yes. So this is a super important piece. That's, I know, so they're not only trying to get information about the other person, but you want to share about yourself and make sure that you know that they know that you know that they know so, yes, so well put. Right, exactly. That they accept you. 
So when we were talking about money stories or some people call money personalities, like let's say we both are savers, but we might save for different things. And so mm -hmm. it's not as if it's like, so that's kind of the conversations that you would have in a marriage and can start earlier. Not to, again, it's not a disqualifier. It's just interesting to see how you have those conversations. Yeah. So if that one person would want to save for a big trip and someone else wants to save for a, re, uh, a bigger house sooner. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's but that's, just... that's not a disqualifier at all, at all. I mean, in fact, that, I mean, in fact, that's probably like, oh, we're both savers. So that's one thing that kind of like works for a benefit, right? You know, most often we're a little bit opposite, right? And most, most couples, you know, it is, there is something to the fact that opposites attract, right? But again, can I see, you know, can I see that the way he sees it or manages money um, is a, it's something that I can jump on board with, that I can be curious about, that I can learn from that person. But if it's something that's like super contrary to the way I view things that it might, you might see and it's, it's like, for example, I'll give you an example. Like if you discover this person has a tremendous amount of debt and doesn't pay it, like literally hasn't been working on paying it back, right? And you are just a person who makes your salary, doesn't get into debt, pays your bills, right? Th th that might be a clash and better talk about it now before you're in a marriage where it's, it, it might get worse, right? Um, or you find out that they gamble, right? Or that they have unlimited access to their parents' credit card and that's not the way you view things, right? So you want to find out what's behind all this. And believe me, I've heard all these stories, right? But I'm hearing them after the fact when there are problems because these things are happening. So a lot can be prevented before the fact. Again, it's not to say that there, these are disqualifiers, is that you want to have as much information as you can. You want to embark in this with a sense of transparency, comfort, trust, right? And not with a million questions unanswered. But you also can notice that the two of you don't know that much about money or you want to work with somebody to figure out how we should get our get ourselves on a track. Yeah. So it's like, like you, we keep stressing, it's not a disqualifier, but it's a very important starting point. Because yes. as soon as the wedding happens and there's rent, who's paying for that rent? And if it is coming from one of the parents, is there something attached to that? Mm -hmm. you, know, you know, always and, is. And for some families, you know, families that are big donors, and that's wonderful. It also may come with coming to a lot of dinners and being a set on stage a lot. And mm -hmm. what does that mean? You know, it's just coming knowing. It's not yes. it's not disqualifiers, but the less shocks, the better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's coming knowing with a plan. And I love the example that you gave because maybe you find out like. No, I actually been meaning to get my life in order in this area. And he too, right? And together you say, you know what? Great. Let's do so. I remember when I first got married, I so admired it. There was a couple of friends of mine also in their first year of marriage. And they were taking this money management class together. And it was the cutest thing. And they were so excited about everything they were learning, right? And it was like so inspiring. Um, so maybe that's something that you all decide together at the beginning. Like, oh, there are weaknesses here. Well, but cool that he's happy to learn and that I'm happy to learn, right? So it's it's an area of commonality. Same uh, what you said about, you know, our parents maybe are supporting us. You know, what's the, what's that? That's a whole, that we could do a whole podcast just on that topic. Maybe not, <laughs> maybe let's not go there, right? But what are the implications? And there are implications. Believe me, there always will be implications, right? Um, again, they're not disqualifiers. They're actually empowering conversations. What we're going to find out, the more what we're going to find out should feel empowering because it's giving us the tools to then make a more informed decision about the, you know, the other person and ourselves. So I think earlier, earlier you said that some, uh, some people don't yet know this about themselves, and they don't know, they don't know how to. The, on the date is not the first time to have this conversation. So doing some self-awareness before about, so, and he, actually hearing how it rolls off your tongue is something that in, in general and anything that's come hard to say, have the conversation before, don't have the first conversation about it on a date. Mm -hmm. So let's go back to some self-awareness. What are things to 
some maybe some journal prompts or some yes. questions to ask to get to know your money style or your money yeah. story. Yeah, that's a great question. And I do agree with you, Devora, that it would be good for us to create a bit of self-awareness and kind of as as we're growing, the more the more growth we've done in this in any area of our lives, the better we're going to be during the dating process. So some of the things that I like to suggest to people is one that's really fundamental is take a piece of paper and write down what the role of each of your primary role givers with money was, right? Whatever that was. And you look at it and then you write down how you feel about that. Is that the way you would like it to be? Is Would you like to things to be different in your relationship, right? And how so, right? Another thing that's important to look at is um, any experiences that you've had with money that have like actually, you know, been positive or negative, but been pretty influential. Again, pen and paper. I actually have a quiz. I'll send you the link to that, but there's, there's some, there's a quiz that one can do to even get to know what we actually think about money, right? Get like that, like those, like, you know, and it's made of like money mad libs where you can just answer very quickly, fill in the blanks and true or false, where you can actually see, oh, I didn't realize that I do maybe think this way. This is something interesting, right? Something to explore, right? So a lot of that, um, I think does make you, it's not like you're now going to fix it overnight, but you're going to see like, how do you feel? Oh, I do feel very uncomfortable with a tremendous amount of wealth, right? And if you're dating with somebody who is like, has been used to a tremendous amount of wealth, right? You might want to be aware of that because you want to, you want to work through that together. You're going to know you're going to have to work through that together, right? On some level, right? So there's just, there is definitely a great benefit to know, to knowing. And, and the, on the flip side of that, if you're somebody who, um, again, has tremendous expectations that your husband will be a breadwinner, and will, you know, have a stable nine to five and you can't stomach entrepreneurship, right? And you're with somebody who's like completely the opposite of that. And they make money one month and they make a lot of money one month. And then for five more months, they don't see any money, right? It's something to talk about, right? It's something to know about yourself because no matter what, if this is the person you're going to marry, you're going to have to deal with that eventually. So if you know it, then you can deal with it it's a very important piece is that now i know so now yeah. i can start working with it or work and or i not. can e and i can even now that i know we can even start sharing about that piece instead of it becoming a shock after right and the shock usually like i said doesn't end doesn't end in healthy conversations the shock is why are we arguing about this right and it's not till later on that we piece together like Oh, it's because he's like that and I can't stand the instability and I can't, you know, my father was always had a nine to five and he had the same job for 35 years and he got a pension, right? And that's the, my, inner, you know, that's who I am. That's who I thought I was marrying. And I just, I, I can't stomach the, the uncertainty, right? It's going to come up. Well, why don't we talk about it first? <laughs> Again, not as a disqualifier, but just no. start working through it yeah. as a couple for your coupleship together. Right. So another thing that you mentioned of when you, about journaling, about how your primary your mother, father, or whoever the met, the husband, wife, mother uh, was in the situation. If you start noticing that you didn't like a specific way mm -hmm. or you're not sure, like traditionally a long time ago, uh, maybe not the, not the daters uh, generation, but Many times men were controlling, more controlling of the how money was spent. They gave the wives a budget. It doesn't work so well anymore. Mm -hmm. So if you're noticing that that might be your default, think about it. Like, think about how that might land on whoever your wife may be. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think speaking about how do we plan to manage the money is it's okay. It's okay to talk about it again, just like it's okay to say how much you have in debt, how much you have in savings, how much you have invested. Right. And so how are we going to do this? So after the wedding, are we going to pay rent with the wedding money? Are we going to pay with my savings? Are we going to have joint bank accounts or not? Like, again, it's not to, it's not to make it like 
we're having this conversation and if we can't come to an agreement, it's a disqualifier. If we can't come to an agreement, the question is why can't we come to an agreement, right? And then it's, it's important that we figure that out because again, we can then solve it now rather than later, right? Because at some point we're gonna have to come to an agreement and we wanna make sure that it's in peace, right? We just have to understand that we're embarking in a marriage that we're supposed to be building something that's called peace. And very often this thing called money ends up being this, doesn't 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 bring in the peace at home but the opposite and as jewish people we want it to be something that is actually uniting us that we're using it, you know to advance god's mission in the world that we're using it to serve you know other people we're using it to finance our values and all that if we can't agree on a lot of the things then there might be problems down the road so we're trying to do all this pre to make sure that oh yeah i get it i get that i didn't grow up with that amount of wealth but I see how he's respectful and I see how he, how there are so many values that we wanted, things that we wanted to be, do together. Or I get that he does, he or she has more debt than I do, but I see that it's not reckless debt. And so it's totally fine, right? Like there's so many things that we can start seeing about each other that are going to help us later down the line. So I want to build on that. Uh, some people do very deep investigative research and they think that they know uh, about people's money habits. It's, and even if you really do know, it's the importance of having the conversations around money because eventually the two of you are going to be having to work with the money. So it's not only the information, it's the continuous conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's really it, Devora. The whole thing revolves around something called communication. It's learning to communicate about it. There's always going to be one of you who's going to be more of a saver, more of a spender, one of you who is going to um, be better at, you know, tracking spreadsheets and organizing things than the other one. That's okay. The point is, can we talk about it? Can we talk when the credit card statement is late or when, you know, we need to make an emergency flight because God forbid something happened, right? Right. You know, I need to go visit my parents, God forbid, right? Can we have an open conversation that is smooth and calm and it's not volatile, it's not, right? Um, or that I don't feel like I need to be hiding money from my husband or that he or she should be hiding from me, right? Which we see so often. Um, and we see financial, uh, right, we see financial infidelity on very small scale and very big scale. And by the way, it's infidelity no matter what. You know, the minute we're lying to our spouse about how much something cost or, you know, how much I took out or, you know, it's already infidelity. It doesn't have to be, I, I, you know, I racked up a hundred thousand dollars in credit card debt. You know, it's just the fact that why am I lying to my spouse? Why am I concealing information? Why don't I feel comfortable saying I went out and I did this, you know, and I took this money from the bank account. That That's not healthy. We want to make sure that we're in a relationship where we are comfortable saying what we're doing with our money because it's our money. <laughs> now that we've joined our lives, it's our money. Before, it's not. It's his and it's hers. Now it's actually our money, right? So if it's ours, we got to be able to talk openly about it. We have to be able to trust that person. They have to be able to trust us. Right. So even if the... Well, actually, let's go to this talking about uh, having some of your own money or discretionary money from the hour money, not having to report every single dollar. I know that we're talking about daters, but this is something that's really on a lot of people's minds. So can we just yeah. Yeah. So I get that question a lot. And I, I, I don't, I, 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 I always say this, you have to do what works for both of you, right? And for some couples joining accounts, works beautifully. They can handle that, right? For some couples, they have to have a his, hers, and ours, right? Now, ideally, there would be hours of some sort, right? You know, I, I personally am a big proponent of the hours, but I'm not against, if it's not working, I'm not against you having separate money and them having separate money. What I'm against is we not talking about what is the way we're going to do it and why is this working for us and why wouldn't it be working for us, right? That's the big problem. The problem is not the system that we create. The problem is what's behind the system, right? Or there's no system or there's no communication. There's no intentionality around it. So these are the things, the decisions that you're both going to have to make. Right. Very often we mirror 
at least one of our parents, right? So we might be, that's why I said some, you might notice that you are yourself kind of rebelling against that obsessiveness with order that your father had. And he, you know, kind of instilled in you and, and you go to another extreme, or you might be following that pattern. Um, we shouldn't, we, we don't know. We don't know until we're actually managing and living real life, right? It's kind of like that thing, like you parenting and you're all of a sudden you're like, oh my gosh, I just heard my mother, right? You didn't know that you were going to be exactly like your mother, right? But all of a sudden you're talking to your child and you're like, what, where did that come from? Right? So it, it might be, it might be. Um, I, I don't think we should be scared of it. I just think we need to know who our parents were with money, right? Because we are going to not only um, see ourselves in one of them, but most likely we're going to see in our spouse, who one of them is. Meaning if, if, if I'm marrying my, in, in your husband, you might see your father or you might want to see your father, right? And so that might be coming at you and you might not be knowing where it's coming from. So you want to make sure that you know who, who, what those roles were and you could talk about it comfortably. That's, that's one of the things like we were talking, saying before, like it shouldn't be scary at that later stage in the game where you're about to get engaged to be open about the fact that, you know, your mother was like this, your father was like this. And, you know, she really was very meticulous about the budget and my father wasn't so, and I, I kind of, I'm, I think I'm, I've, I've noticed that myself about money, I'm more meticulous like my mother. And it makes me, you know, my father's recklessness made me nervous or, you know, and what do you think? What about you? How is, how is your upbringing around money? What were your parents like? Right. That's, perfectly game that's exactly what you should be doing that's how we're learning right i mean the same, the same thing that we were talking about different parenting styles it's also money styles so like another conversation you may have on your dating and the more mm -hmm. typical is parenting styles and right it's the split now now you've covered the parenting styles now we'll actually talk about money styles and the two may intertwine at some point yes oh, absolutely parenting costs money mm -hmm. everything costs money of course of and course, we save for our kids, and we spend for our kids, and we invest for our kids, and and and, and we I model want, for our kids. I want listeners to know that just as it's parenting is a beautiful experience, and you know, managing a household full of children and taking care of their needs and emotional needs and physical needs, right? So is managing your money. Like these are all blessings that God gives us. Like it's the, we shouldn't be like thinking, oh my gosh, I can't believe I have to do that. Right. I can't believe I'm going to be talking about my children. No, it's a bracha. It's such a blessing that you will have a partner to discuss your children's lives with. Right. I can't believe I'm going to have to talk about my money and deal with my money. No, it's a huge bracha. It's a huge blessing that you will be talking about money with your spouse and you will be deciding together where the money goes, you know, this month and in 10 months and in 20, you know, right. This is a big blessing and we should look at it that way. And, and, you know, and I think it's important because I don't want listeners to feel like, oh, why would I even want to do this? Right? No, it is so beautiful. These are all blessings and tools that God has given you. Okay. Um, someone asks uh, about, I don't have pronunciation yet. That's not our, don't, our system doesn't, I guess it's our, I'm still in yeshiva or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. So I guess we can, I guess the answer is you just can't talk about what you don't have. <laughs> I mean, you don't have, well, the terms, but you can talk about. There's so, so many layers. Of course, you can still talk about the way your parents raised you around money, right? You know, you don't have a Parnassa, but you probably have some sort of allowance from your parents when you were in yeshiva, right? Um, you know, you probably got some jobs along the way at some point, you know, raised money to go to camp. Like there's so many stories. Again, our money story is made up of so many events, right? Those bake sales you ran or those when you were a camp counselor, what did you do with that money, right? Or, you know, um, I, I, again, I think it's about getting to know each other. It's not about it's not about disqualifying someone just because they don't have a parnasa today, right? Um, it's more about, oh, and well, what's the plan, right? Are we are we are we embarking on a relationship with where the husband is not going to work and I will be the major breadwinner? That's a conversation to be had, right? Um, and perhaps that works for them. Perhaps that's exactly the same model that she saw and that he saw. 
and and it and it totally works. So I think there's still a lot to talk about, even if a person is dating and they don't make money themselves um, yet, because we've all been managing money somehow and relating to it from a very young age, right? And some of us maybe just the minute we went to yeshiva, we just got or took high school or wherever, we just got access to our credit card, our parents' credit cards, or we got a monthly stipend with our parents, or we had to work, you know, those are cool things that we want to know. I think you can add to that is who are your money models? Like someone mm -hmm. that you, whether it's a famous person or your next door neighbor. Yeah. And then sometimes it's models that you don't want to emulate. Like you don't mm -hmm. want that in my life. And can we work to make, to make sure that that doesn't happen? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We worked. And again, so can we work together? That's what we're looking for a lot is can we work together on these things? Can we work together? I'm all, am I curious about this? Do I feel safe? Do I feel like I can trust this person, right? Um, am I curious about what they're saying? Can I respect that perspective, right? Those are the things that I'm looking for. I'm not looking for, they have the same amount of money as I do. I, his parents have the same amount of money and the same lifestyle as my parents. No, it might work out that way, right? But mo most likely it's going to be very different. That's not what you're looking for. You're not looking exactly for that. You're looking for, again, the comfort level and discussing, right? The, 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 the trust, the respect, the curiosity, all of that. And I think also in this conversation, you might be able to notice a red flag of uh, financial Absolutely. abuse, financial control. I Absolutely. Have to, put, have to put that hat on. So if you don't have that conversation, you won't know. Right. And Absolutely. Possibly not wanting to have that conversation is another level of some things to look at or some red flag. And it's not necessarily is it abuse. It could be that so totally new topic to them. And so then I guess the question is, can we talk about it next date? If you really want to go there. A hundred percent. I think we said this before. If a person is not willing to talk about this, then that is a red flag, right? And it's okay. Like you said, they might be really uncomfortable because of whatever their money story is, but can somebody get involved and help them get through that conversation, right? But if the conversation doesn't happen, um, I'm not sure why we're getting married. Like that's pretty scary, right? It's okay if they need guidance, if it's okay, if the shatchan needs to make him feel at ease or the mashpia or the some, you know, right. Until, until we, we, we can take baby steps in the conversation. Like you said, another date or maybe another three more dates. Right. And we could take a bite size, but uh, vehemently opposing the conversation, that could be a problem. Right. Definitely. And as far as the question just left me, I'll have you talk through this. Um, Oh, the, here's the question. Uh, marrying someone from a very different financial background, zero, like someone, someone from a well, very wealthy or even more wealth, more wealthy. Can mm -hmm. that work? How can that work? What can they have? What should they be discussing? Before? It could abs it could absolutely work. Um, again, communication, communication, communication. I can't stress it enough. Right. It can absolutely work. You're building a new life together. And the more you openly talk about what makes you feel uncomfortable, like I just heard somebody was like, my husband's family is very, very wealthy. Um, my husband is used to a tremendous amount of wealth and he inherited a tremendous amount of wealth. And so he's okay with buying us another bigger house. I don't know why we need another bigger house, right? And I'm just like, it makes me so uncomfortable. That's okay. As long as you could express that and you could come to an agreement where he can see your point of view and you can see his point of view and then you could make a decision, right? Maybe you're not expressing that you'd rather see that money go towards something else. And when you have that conversation, he says, actually, I'd really admire that about you. And I think you're right. Let's do that. Let's put that money aside and let's donate a building, right? <laughs> we don't need another big house, right? But if you feel so passionately that, you're okay with not having a bigger house because we have a big enough house, then I'm, I'm on board with your plan. Right. And so, but none of that can happen if we just, this person was saying to me, like, she just cringes. Like every time they go look at more houses and more houses and things, and she says, why do we have to do that? But she's not expressing that. She's just feeling this discomfort and it's building this tension between them. Right. So it, it's all communication. 
it's all communication because the more we are able to talk, the more empathy we create for each other. The more he knows about me, the more I know about him, the more I can understand the person and empathize with his point of view, right? And then we can build a new paradigm together. Now he's operating on his parents' paradigm and she's operating her parents' paradigm. But we haven't built one together yet because we haven't even talked about what we think, what we feel and what we want to create. So that's already, you know, once we're married, I'm not saying that, you know, you're going to have that so, so deep a conversation at the beginning, but what we're saying is start having the conversation now because you will have it, like you said before. Okay. So we were talking about predators. So I just wanted to put in something, another thing, piece about money is the money for the wedding. Now I know I'm just, cause we're talking about money. It's not that it's right. related to dating is especially when there's two different value systems. Mm-hmm. Just don't get involved. I mean, that's that's my like. Let the parents make you the wedding, as opposed to going detail to detail and getting between the two parents. Because I've I've worked as a mediator between two families around how much money to spend on the wedding, and it really got between the couple. Hmm. And it's it's tough. So just want to bring that out there. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's 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 a it's tricky what you just said um, because. Yes, if you're getting married earlier in life and you're not the ones financing your own wedding, you know, the question is, is there a real need to talk about it? Um, I'll tell you, I know you just suggested that don't get involved, but I will say if there's something that's making you feel really uncomfortable, this is the person that is supposed to know you the most and you're supposed to be able to trust the most in your life, right? Right. It's not to say that you're going to say anything against, by the way, this is rule number one. You don't deal with your fa- your, your husband's family and your husband doesn't deal with you or yours, right? Um, it's not to say that they're gonna, you're going to say anything against his or her parents, but it is something to talk about. Like, wow, I didn't expect us to be getting such a lavish wedding. Like, I, 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 I don't know. I don't feel so comfortable with this. How do you feel? I don't think there's a problem talking about how we're feeling and seeing if, you know, in the future, that's the way we want, we expect things to be, right? So, and then for that example, yes. But when uh, when the two parents are arguing and then the kids get involved. Oh, no, 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 no. That's that's, that's more what I was alluding to than what you you were saying. It's it's fine. But when the kids get involved or tell your father. For sure not. Not now and not when you're married. The relationship is way too young anyway. No, you not, now, know not when you're married. Not now and now. You never, never. My family, I relay the messages. I manage your family. I'm always nice, calm. Like, you know, that should be the stance. Like you should never be the intermediate, nothing. Whatever has to do with my family, I will be the person. Whatever has to do with your family, you will be the person. Again, if we want to, we want to communicate one voice, but meaning The person who communicates, right, is the son of those parents and the daughter of these parents, right? You know, if your husband and you decide that something is going to be, this is the way you're going to do things. And this is a type of, I don't know, uh, outing that you allow for your children, right? You don't need to be the one communicating that to your in-laws. It has to be him. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. We should go to a whole different kind of conversation about dealing with your (laughs) in-laws. Yeah. (laughs) So this has been very, very helpful. If anyone has any questions, Yael, how can they reach out to you? Sure. So I'm always accessible via email, Yael at yaeltrush.com. You can always uh, reach out to me. Also DM me on Instagram at Yael Trush. Um, If you wanted to start getting to know yourself a little bit better about money, send me an email. I will send you some resources. Um, I always tell people that once they get married, they should be having money dates. But I also always say that They should be having them when they're single. If you're already earning money, you should be having some time where you sit with it and you spend some time, you know, giving it some attention. And like you said, exploring what is my mindset around this? So um, I call those money dates. You call them money parties. And I have a very cool guy that makes it very accessible and, you know, kind of tangible, easy to understand. You can download that for free at yaeltrush.com forward slash money date. And it'll give you 10 tips for money date success. And I always say, Devorah, that it's it, for those of us who are single, 
it definitely puts us in a better position to enter marriage when we are coming at the relationship already comfortable ourselves with dealing with our money, right? Because now we're we're entering this relationship not from a place of like, oh, discomfort, you know, not like you're already entering the relationship. Place. No, but I'm I'm com- I'm comfortable with the way, you know, with dealing with it. It's like so again, it, it definitely preps, it puts you in a in a in a better position if you start practicing these little money dates by yourself, even if you're single. Or money dates with a friend. It's two two single friends talking about money. It's just hearing your own voice I love talking that. about money. Yes. And getting insights from each other is kind of a prep for, I mean, not spending the kind of money that you would be spending as a married couple, but you can start having conversations and taking insights and influence from each other. Yes. And and you, you lift the fog and you realize that it shouldn't be taboo. Really, it shouldn't be. There's nothing taboo about it. It's so helpful. Thank, uh, thank you. Thank you so much, Yael. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you and good night.